So I, I don't know. I think I saw Sister Cathy um, in a house the other day. Yes, we give thanks. Sister Cathy is here. You know, I don't know if you want to quickly bless the place, Sister Cathy, before we go into a musical segment and, and come back um, with, the, with the discussion. But seeing Sister Cathy journey, you know, as a traveler, this, you know. A couple of weeks ago, he, he said she does South Africa. Next thing we know, she boom, she, she bounced out of the US. And then she, when we talked to her, she said, No, mama, come to Jam Rock. You know? So come forward, Sister Cathy, and bless the place. And yes, you know yes, what I mean? In honor of your father and the 124 celebration. And uh, Sister Cathy, you know, yes. Hail the eye! Hail the eye! Hail his majesty, kings of kings and lord of lords, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah and empress Menin, our queen. Yes, I come to you in the name of Leonard Percival Howell. I'm his youngest daughter and my name is Catherine, affectionately known as Sister Kathy. Sister Kathy Howell. A lot of people say, why are the feel daughter that you know but cut off my head now? Look for me now. Look for my father's face now. Uh, whoa! I have to do the work. I've been doing the work. I've been doing the work that I'm so tired. I'm an elder now. You know? <laughs> but can't give up. I on the battlefield, I do the work. <laughs> As a brother said, I just come from South Africa last week and it's true. But down there, I do the work. Go down there, go say. The king of the Embo kingdom invited me to South Africa. And we sat down to talk about land for my people to cultivate, to do our herbs and whatever necessary that needs to be done. And he assured me that he will help. He will give me any kind of possible help that I need. And I give thanks for that. And of course, he also mentioned to me about Angola, that he grew up in Angola and there's lots of land in Angola. And the soil down in Angola is very good. Because right now, South Africa is very dry. And if we're going to do farming, we're going to need water. And Angola seemed to have a lot of that. So moving fast forward, I'm also down in Ghana. I am a sister that it's traveled. I love to travel because West Africa is where my ancestors came from. West Africa is where my father came from. My father came from one of the greatest tribes in West Africa, which is the Ashanti tribe. That's why he was to really have all of that fire inside of him because of his ancestors. My mother, on the other hand, came out of Nigeria. Her family were Igbo from the Nigerian side. So I and I have all kind of African blood and all kind of things running in my vein, but more than anything, my father looked at me one day and he said, I call you Catherine because you're going to catch them in a St. Catherine. I can talk to my, talk about my father as a father because when you have a father that is so great, you know, you look at him as we call him Dada. You know, he was my Dada. I mean, in terms of being a great man, that was the furthest thing from my mind when I was a child because I didn't understood, I didn't understand. I didn't even understand my dad because he was so mysterious. I remember one day I was talking to him, and this is no lie, no joke, and I'm not making this up, sisters and brothers. This is the truth. I was right here. My dad was standing right beside me. And I was talking to him and you know, he has, he kind of talk a little stammer, you know, a little stutter. And we were talking about the surrounding because as a child, he used to remind Mike, 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 Mike. Yeah, as a child, he used to remind me how the earth is so magnificent and how the color of the rainbow was so magnificent. That was the first big word I knew as a child. And it represent the color, the rainbow is the rainbow color of all the people. And we as black people 
brought everyone here. So any white person that is here, there's blackness in you in case you didn't know that. <laughs> You're still part of us whether you want to believe it or not. Anyway, coming back to the story. My dad was here standing and I'm like looking over here and said, boy, daddy so and so. And when I looked, there is no possible way my father could have moved in physically unless I knew. And the man was right over there. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, dad. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> he said, he goes, <laughs> as to show me like, you don't know who I am. You don't know the mystic man that I am. You don't know that I've gone to Africa and, and be with my tribal people. You don't know that they have given me powers. Sometime when my dad got into a lot of problems with the colonial government and them looking for him over there because they really thought that he was over there. Possible, but in for us to enjoy the privilege that we share today. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not into color and I'm not into race. That's white man problem, not mine. Because for me, we're all human beings. His majesty told us that we belong to one race and that's the human race. So here I am talking to you today, sisters and brothers that my father really changed Jamaica and started a new paradigm. A new paradigm that no one had the balls and the guts to do. Bunkley was the, uh, the two other brothers was that, was the two brothers that were there, was it Hines and uh, another brother who really wanted to get into the Rasta. But they did not do what my father did. And what my father did was he was committed. He was committed to lay his life down for his people. And those are his words out of into my ear. He was willing to lay his life down for the liberation and salvation of his people. That is said they could send him to jail as much time as they want to. They could send him to the madhouse as much time as they wanted to. He is the only Jamaican man I know who have gone to jail so many times and have gone to the madhouse so many times. And one day I remember when I just came in from college in New York and I sat down and I said, Dad, don't they give you the shock treatment in Bellevue? And he said, yes, Catherine. But in my mind, I mentally comes out of my body. So whatever was going on in the flesh, it was no concern of mine because I was in the spiritual realm. So each and every one of us here today should realize that we are both physical and we're spiritual. And right now most of us are living into the physical. But once we tap into the energy of the spiritual, you'll find that you become a new member of the human race. And I don't want to sit here and take the mic and stay too long because a lot of other people have a lot of things to say and a lot of people have a concept to say, but it's good that you can read. The brothers at the university have written the books on my dad and I'd love for you to support them. You know, brother Clinton Hutton, Barnett and brother, uh, and there's another brother that wrote this book that everyone should have a copy and each one teaches one. So I say, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. And I give thanks for everyone that is here, but I can't leave this code without talking about Pinnacle because I and I have put into the work in a Pinnacle. And when I said I put in the work, I have put in the work that nobody in this room or in here sitting to say that they have put it as much work that I have done for Pinnacle. And we had gotten to the point where the government had considered us. But then we have other entities in the Rasta movement who want leadership position and want to control Rasta and Rasta business. But by the help of my ancestors and all the dry bones 
that are there in Pinnacle and those cemetery. I pledge by the blood of my ancestors, I, Sister Catherine, will make sure that Pinnacle become a heritage site. And I'm not alone, brothers and sisters. The ancestors are with me. The ancestors are with me. And Brother Mike, I'm telling you, I don't care who comes in front of I and I. If I have to jump over you, step over you, climb over you, or burn you. Yeah, Pinnacle is Rasta Village. Yeah, and it must become a Rasta heritage site. Some of them say my father put pay money down and deposit. First initial deposit, yes, he made. But it's my father's hard-earned money that bought Pinnacle for Rastafarian people. He was the first philanthropist in Jamaica. And we all have to respect this. So we don't need to come fight the Howell family and the Howellites for Pinnacle. Because Pinnacle belongs to everybody, all Rasta. So who is going to be in control? Most of some of these Rasta brothers right now in Pinnacle think that they want to take over. Number one, them don't have no money. Hello? At least I have a little savings. Hello? At least I can generate some income. Hello? Let me see them do that now. So they need to buck off. They need to buck off and realize that they cannot be in control. Some of them is not even in control of their own goddamn lives. So how, what made them think that they should be in control of Pinnacle? They disrespect the old people that have been there most of them died there their blood and everything that they have and then now their brothers who hurry come up rascals that won't come and take over but it's not going to happen and the government did says to us sister Catherine the rest of the people they're not united and there's just too much confusion going on. I had several meetings with the Minister of Culture. The last time I spoke to her, she talked about arbitration because one entity said that they are they speak for Rasta. And so they're gonna object to whatever lot that the government have allotted to us, which was seven lots. It's seven lots. 199 plus six, that's seven lots. So as brother says, we will take the seven and move forward because whatever lot is left there we can always go after the, re the rest of 100 lots that is still left there that's not being sold but at least let us move forward to what we have and i bring love and light from my family to all brothers and sisters that are here today i just want to thank you for coming out Thank you for coming out and share your time and your energy with us. And I do look forward to see most of the faces here in Pinnacle soon. Because we're moving forward, Brother Clinton. We're moving forward, Brother Barnett. We're moving forward and no one can stop us now. I just want to give thanks again and say, Powerful, Sister Catherine. Powerful, powerful. Yes, step on, yes, yes, powerful delivery. I see it's the energy yeah. right there, so, yeah, man, undoubtedly. Yes, so, right about now, I just.